Hi guys, my name is Bob Wojcianik and I'm a self-taught digital sculptor. I started sculpting traditionally around 10 years ago and have been sculpting miniatures for 3D printing full-time in ZBrush for about 4 years now. In my upcoming class I will be teaching you everything you need to know about designing models for 3D printing. In the previous workshops I showed some tips but with this class we will start over and we will be able to go much more in depth. We will work almost exclusively in ZBrush. We will start with the overview of my UI and the tools that I use for most of my work. We will cover all the basic principles of designing a miniature for printing and later casting in resin. After that we will move to the exciting part, which is of course sculpting. We will go through the anatomy of the human and which features need to be exaggerated to show up nicely in the final print. Then we will move through all the most common parts of the equipment you can encounter when sculpting fantasy miniatures. All kind of kinds of weapons, armor and cloths. We will cover things like hair, fur and scales as well to make sure you can sculpt monsters and all kinds of creatures as well as humans. We will also learn about one of the biggest difference between sculpting for the physical miniatures rather than assets for video games, which is posing of course. I'll teach you how to pose the model in an interesting and dynamic way, all within ZBrush. After all that is done, I'll teach you how to fill all the gaps in the model that could cause li uh, issues later on. I'll show you how to cut the miniatures into parts, set the exact dimensions and we will make sure that they will be ready for printing prototypes and casting final products. After you complete the class you will have your own miniature ready to be printed and the knowledge required to sculpt any other miniature you can imagine. This is pretty much where my script ends so I'll just let you watch the rest of the video while pointing some things here and there. So as you could see I'm working on some viking bust here. I sculpted it just to show you some bits of my workflow. It took me about half an hour, so you're probably seeing it around in around two times speed. Uh, as you can see, I'm using mainly uh, simple tools like clipping and trimming, and of course the brushes you can see down below. The ones I use the most often are clay buildup and dumb standard for uh, more organic shapes and I use edge polish and trimming for hard surface. So as you can see I'm not really using any Z modeler here I'm just uh, appending some basic uh, shapes like cylinders and cubes to just uh, cut it and modify it to my liking rather than to model it from the uh, absolute zero and as you can see I'm just using a lot of trimming and edge polish for this hard surface modeling. What you can also notice is that I don't really uh, make thickness to the objects like it would have in a real life. I'm just making sure it goes all the way inside of the model so that this there is no empty space between uh, the parts of the model because if we had that it would cause uh, many issues in the printing and later casting so you always have to make sure that your model doesn't have holes in it. You can see me using here the insert multi mesh brush which is the last one you can see on the bottom of the screen and it's really helpful when it comes to rivets and stuff like that. You just drag it out and hold control to to keep it uh, unisized. You make sure that way that each of them is the same size. And that's about it for the helmet, uh, except for battle damage that I'll be adding later. And now I'll move on to the beard. The way I would go about it is, as always, just append the sphere and move it around to my liking. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to do. 
just make sure it looks uh, like a beard and it, it can be uh, read as that from a uh, distance that it will be seen which is pretty far of course I just started with dumb standard uh, which is awesome brush to make hair and fur uh, as you can see it's really easy to mm, mark general shapes and to make it appear as hair from the uh, distance that you uh, usually look at the model uh, now I zero meshed it to make sure that geometry is uh, easy to work with wi in the next stages so you always want to do that and now I'm just pushing it with another brush that I use constantly which is the move brush it's let it lets you to deform stuff like this r really easily again uh, notice that I don't leave any space between the hair or uh, the hair and the face or the hair each other any space that would uh, would cause any troubles with, with printing you always have to make sure that everything is uh, one uh, volume one object that will be easy to print and now as you can see uh, I'm just adding some bottle damage uh, it's an awesome brush I found online I can later give a link to it to you all it's free and uh, the author uh, agreed that anybody can use it so that's awesome of his uh, I'll, I'll share a link to that in the description so it's real easy if you have the right brushes you can either download it or, to m or make yourself uh, we'll cover that later as well and as you can see now I moved to make uh, a weapon to demonstrate how I would approach making uh, th in this case an axe so as with the helmet I'm mainly using the tools that I always use for hard surface which is of course clipping, trimming, edge polish, trim dynamic and that's pretty much it you just have to find the, the, the shape you that looks appealing to you and you can also modify it with move which you will see in a second and of course you make uh, you have to make sure that it's thick enough usually the printer wouldn't uh, handle anything that is thinner that, uh, than a uh, one millimeter millimeter and it doesn't mean you can you can't add a little details because you can and it will it will print with without issues but if the part is too thin and in, in if it's on its own I it's easy, easy to break so for uh, models that people will use later for gaming or on the on the table uh, you want to make sure that everything is durable enough to to use and uh, that it won't break in the first minute of usage so yeah you have to make sure that that every weapon and uh, any spikes are thick and big enough that they don't break it might be obvious but I'm gonna tell you anyway how to use uh, all the clipping and trimming brushes so you always have to click ctrl shift and then on the brush menu you have to uh, click on the brush you want to use and then you can just control shift click on the canvas then drag the, the, the line and if you want to bend it or uh, then you have to click alt and you can click double alt to make sure that it's it's a sharp bend rather than a delicate one like the ones I'm using here and usually uh, with the sword uh, I would just make the uh, blade with the with the trimming brush but as you can see the axe has a more interesting uh, design and it cannot be just uh, handled 
easily with one cut so I'll just switch to trim to cut the edge and then to edge polish to make sure it's uh, flat all the way through so that's my workflow for the weapons that are not straight like a sword that we will of course make in a curse as well it's a little hard to uh, explain everything since it's uh, just a time lapse and I cannot just show you everything step by step but in the curse of course we will be covering all that in detail step by step and if anybody has any questions I will of course explain it further so yeah that's about it for creating uh, and this axe I will just move, move on to the, the posing it in a second so uh, I will not show you the posing of the body today but you can see the method I'm using for posing will be uh, just a move gizmo and rotate uh, to place it in the right place uh, for the uh, simple posing like the weapon I'm doing here uh, I'm just using the gizmo uh, with the organic posing like twisting an arm or or moving the leg or something like that I would use subdivision levels and yeah I'll explain that more in depth in the course but you of course have to project the details first uh, to minimize the deformation but yeah, as I said in this example, it's really easy. Alright guys, this is pretty much it for this short presentation. I can't wait to see you all at the class. And take care, see you.